On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a guan. A blessed and wonderful Tuesday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So in the morning, I'm a peep, so we are going to kick it off with an update. <laughs> yeah, man, may I tell you about that double knockings and clappings over there in Capchalan, Highgate, St. Mary. Now, this knockings and clappings involved a 16-year-old student and also a correctional officer who is also pretty much young himself. So no one here screen is the 16 year old student who has since been identified as Nathan Segree but popularly called in the streets by his alias Pazzi and a 22 year old correctional officer identified as Giovanni Higgins otherwise known as Marcus in the streets. Now this knockings and clappings is a result of an ongoing feud between rival factions not necessarily gangs but rival factions nonetheless dating as far back as in 2018 when there was a dispute between a man known as henry winter and also another man known as anthony graham now this dispute was over a school dance group conflict between students from St. Mary High School and also St. Mary Technical High School and that spilled over into a serious altercation in which Henry Winter lost his life in July of 2020. The man known as Anthony Graham was arrested and charged and brought before the courts for his loss of life. However, the case was thrown out by Chief Justice Brian Sykes and Anthony Graham walked free. Now, it was widely stated that the now deceased correctional officer Giovanni Higgins was a close associate of Anthony Graham. It is said that he was very much present and also accused to be a part of the dispute that ended the life of Henry Winter. Now Henry Winter had his own set of associates who sought to avenge his life and those persons is said to be behind the latest spirit of violence in the Highgate area. So now the police is trying to locate those associates aligned to the now deceased Henry Winter and also to put on high alert associates of Anthony Graham. Now a lot of things is definitely going on because both sides of the fence is definitely aiming to retaliate for the loss of life from both sides. So an ongoing war is definitely in the air and the police in Highgate is trying their utmost best to dissolve same. So persons from both sides of Henry Winter and that of Anthony Graham. The police is asking to cease and desist from doing any 
form of retaliation but bring whatsoever information you have to them so they can find these criminal elements and put them behind bars stop taking the law in your own hands because sometimes just sometimes it may work out to be way worse than what it could have or should have be yeah man so anyway make we continue in yesterday morning's vlog, I made mention of a knockings and clappings incident that took place over there in Kingsvale in the parish of Hanover, where a man end up losing three pints, a police end up get can up, and a police officer also got seriously injured from missiles thrown at them from the general public. The deceased man is presently on your screen. He has since been identified as Ovedo Samuels, otherwise known as Vedo in the streets. He is of a Mount Pleasant address in the parish of Hanover. Now, reports reaching on the spot news media is that the police officers went to turn off a wake that was deemed to be illegal as there was no permits granted for that wake to be held in the area deemed as violent. Now the police approached and they were met with resistance from the general public who hurled missiles at them and injuring one of the police officers. It is also said that Ovado Samuels engaged one of the police officers in a physical confrontation and the police acted in self-defense of himself and that of his colleague because the angry mob was closing in on them and the police officer had no other choice but to defend himself. Now Ovado was hit and he ended up losing his life. Many persons are saying that the police could have caught him in his foot. But what many persons are not saying is that all of that could have been avoided if the wake was just turned off at 4 a.m. in the morning. Ovado Samuels did not have to enter into a physical confrontation with the police either. And the crowds did not have to throw stones at the police officers either. Some persons are saying it's just a week, the police them should have leave it alone. But what persons don't understand is that police officers are sent on assignments. They are not the lawmakers, but they just enforce the laws that are already there in black and white. So you cannot take the task with the police officer who is carrying out his basic function, but take that task with the lawmakers of our country. The two political parties that we jump up and down in a them green shirt and them orange shirt, and them write the laws, man, and make all amendments thereof. So if the general public have a problem with a certain law, Take it to the politicians, make them pull a bill before the parliament and get that type of law either relaxed or whatsoever the case may be to suit. Now over there in the parish of St. James, this old dirty nasty boy are presently on your screen, a whole pervert, <laughs> yeah man may I tell you. Especially to the females using ATM machines in the general Montego Bay area. This man was seen yesterday along Church Street in Montego Bay. And he was seen outside of an ATM machine when a female was on the inside drawing money. It is said that the man stood outside, looked on the female and was pleasuring himself on the outside. What we Jamaicans would have called jerk off. It is said that the female on the inside saw what was happening and got seriously frightened and was very much afraid. She made several attempts to call the police in which the last attempt was successful and also a good Samaritan who saw what was happening came to her aid and assistance. The police however told her not to come out of the ATM machine until they arrive. By the time the police arrived, the culprit left and the woman was whisked to safety. 
Now to all the females, we no just need to be extra vigilant, be extra careful. And if you can, please travel with a male friend, a male companion, a male family member whilst using these ATM machines, especially in some volatile or lonely areas. Yeah, man. Now, my peeps, we have some real sad news to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public. As one of our nation's most vulnerable a senior citizen lost his life after he went with a fellow farmer to buy cows in New Yarmouth district in Clarendon yesterday morning, where he was robbed and shot dead by criminal elements in that era. The deceased man presently on your screen has since been identified as 64-year-old David Noel Dixon, who is also a butcher from the Robbins Hall era of Manchester. The other farmer, however, managed to escape without injuries. So reports reaching on the spot news media is that sometime about 7 a.m. yesterday morning, Mr. Dixon, who is affectionately called Mass D, and the other farmer traveled to New Yarmouth District to purchase cows. They traveled in the now deceased Toyota motor truck presently on your screen. The police reports suggest that upon both farmers reaching a certain section of the Yarmouth main road in Clarendon, they were pounced upon by men in a silver motor car. It is said that the occupants of the silver motor car reportedly opened gunfire on them from behind. It is said in the police report that Dixon, in a bid to escape injuries, abandoned the motor truck and ran. The gun men pursued them and continued firing at them. The other farmer, however, made good his escape and alerted residents who called the police. So upon the arrival of the lawmen, they found the lifeless body of Mr. Dixon with what appears to be gunshot wounds to the back of the head. Now the police says that they suspected that Dixon was robbed of an undetermined sum of cash which he had on his person to purchase the two cows. Now information reaching on the spot news media is that whomever is responsible for that wicked and brutal act was calling him from last week Saturday to come to Clarendon to purchase the cows and that he had approximately 800,000 Jamaican dollars on him during the robbery and his loss of life. This man is 64 years of age. He ran after shots was hurled at him. If you really want the money, you could have did catch him and just take the money and leave the man alone. You know? you never have to take the man's life at age 64. He's still very much active and still out there trying to earn his honest bread. And this is the thanks that he got. Oh, I may mean, tell my peeps, the thing rough out of John shop there. Now over there in the St. Andrew's South Police Division, a man end up losing three pines in the community of Seaview Gardens. So the police are trying to determine the motive behind that knockings and clappings that resulted in the loss of life of the man in Seaview Gardens. The victim has since been identified as Donovan Anthony Collins, also known as Sarge. Another elderly, a 59-year-old vendor, he's of a Maple View Road address in Kingston 11. Now reports reaching on the spot news media is that sometime about 11 a.m., residents reportedly heard loud explosions like Kana Beat that took place near the gully on White Sea Drive and they called the police attention to it. The lawmen arrived and found Collins laying face down in a pool of blood with what appears to be some serious kind of, kind of wounds to the face and 
upper body. He had been conned up several times, the police said. He was rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital in a marked service vehicle, but was pronounced you know what upon arrival. The police are pursuing several theories in order to determine the motive for that knockings and clappings. Now, on the spot news media, as always, will definitely stay tuned and keep in touch with you and definitely update you in subsequent newscast. So anyway, my peeps, remember, if you like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man. <laughs>